Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirk, and we're going to make the handle for our teacup. Handle for the teacup. Now, I like to collapse things occasionally. Make sure it's saved out if you do, but I'll collapse all. It just makes it easier for me sometimes. Collapse all, boom. Just click yes, and it changes it into an editable mesh. Well, I don't really want that right now. I'll go for an editable poly, so let's change that into an editable poly. There's a few differences there. I'll grab the polygons to start to pull out to make the handle. A couple of ways to do that, a couple of ways to do everything. But I'll select, make sure I have the selection tool. Now, a few things. If I do not ignore the back face, I mess up and I select pretty much everything. But it's funny that even if you do have ignore back face on and you do the selection, if I click and drag, it will also select the back parts. So, a few ways to do that. Make sure this is a straight on view here. Just checking. Okay. A few ways to do that. I can click and just, whoops, deselect. Click by just clicking, holding down the control key, clicking again and again and again. And I just get that front. If I click and drag, I sometimes get the back anyway because that back is also the front because I have an inside of the cup. At any rate. So here we go. And I'm going to extrude this just a little bit. I don't want to mess with a nice curved shape on the top of the cup, so I'll extrude it just a little bit. I might want to play with the settings here, or just do the regular extrude. I'll just do this and pull it out just a little bit. That's fine. Just a little bit there. Maybe a little more, but for right now, that's fine. Now, I did that because I'm going to go into the vertices, the points. I'm going to start to mess with them. I'm going to start to move them around and kind of shape this. So you can see that kind of square where it just came on in a little bit. I'm going to grab some of those points there. I'm going to do a little trick, grabbing just those, did I get it? I want to make sure you didn't get any of the others because I can truly mess it up. Let's see. Yeah, you have to take your time when doing this. Looks good, I just want those very front points there. You can see them. Good. I'm just doing those four on the side like that, on the very corners. Now, I want kind of a roundish shape. So I'll cheat it. I'll grab Select and Uniform Scale. I could move them each in manually, but I'll just do this. I like it. And I will pull that in. And I can use the view here. I'm just going to do it manually right now and pull this in. So I start to get kind of a circle-ish type of, whoops, at this point. Let's grab the others two, bring them along for the ride. Once again, this is hitting the control key. Make sure you get the right ones. It's worth going around and checking, it really is. Let's go around and check. Ah, see, I grabbed the wrong one there, so hit the Alt and deselect that guy. Was it the right now? It was. Okay, Control Z and undo that. Everything on there. Yep. Okay. Looks like I've got pretty much everything, except the center. I don't need the center yet. What I'm going to do is this. And I'll take the whole thing and scale the whole thing in again. So it evenly makes, should be fairly even, evenly makes a near circle. doesn't have to be exact. Teacups aren't exactly circle or <laughs> circular that way. For the handles, they can be different. Hold out a bit, because you don't want it inside. And then you start to rotate and take a look at it. Okay. I'm going to have to adjust this manually a bit because some parts are pulled out more than others. I'm going to want to grab the points here, these guys here, here, and this fellow here. Make sure nothing else is selected. That's always a danger. It looks pretty good. I'll pull that whole section out just a little bit. Missed that top one, didn't I? Okay, let's grab it and pull it out just a little bit. All right, so it's all separated a bit from the base of the model. I'm going to stretch that in a little also, so it's not right, right at the very top of it. That looks pretty good. 
Okay, so I've got something to work with. And that's how you basically turn it into a kind of a roundish shape. Now from here, because we started on the front, back, left, and right, and had that pretty symmetrical when we pulled it out, we don't have to worry about setting the view. We can just go ahead and start to extrude it. So I'll select those polygons, just those polygons. Ah, they're still selected, wonderful. And I'll start the extrude. Actually, I don't have to. There's a couple ways to do this. I can just extrude, rotate, shape, extrude, rotate, stretch, shape. But I'll try a different route this time. I'm going to do it the nice, easy way. So I've got the base shape of the cup here. And I'm going to change something with a handle. I'm going to have it extruded out in a nice way. I can bring the grid back here with a G. I'm going to extrude it out in a nice controlled way with a spline. So I'll build a spline as a guiding line. So I'm just going to click where it would come out from. I can start this over here, it doesn't really matter. But I'll click roughly where it would come out from. And maybe I want to make it fancy, maybe not. But I'll just kind of for a gentle rough curve. Keep in mind I can adjust this as needed. <laughs> Alright, I'll right click. Play with it a little bit. So it's something that you'd like. Go to the vertices and move these over as needed. So take this guy here, put it like that, I think. Adjust it any way you want. That looks better. The rest of it's not bad. Teacups always have their own certain little, what's the word, flare, I guess. Didn't want to move it quite there. And over here, I'm trying to keep this coming out fairly straight. It just makes it easier. All right, so that keeps it coming out fairly straight to begin with. Okay, so we have something for it to go along, and we'll start the extrusion. Maybe you just stretch this teacup out a little bit for the uh, line, I think you could probably do. Just a little bit. Okay. That's fine. It's good enough to start, right? So we'll go into the teacup again. And with that selected, I need those polys. Should be selected still. Good. So when the polys are selected, go back in here, polys selected. I'll get the grid away again. I have to extrude it. And there's a nice little trick here, extrude along spline. Now if I just click it and select it, it'll work. Boom. But it looks awfully clunky, doesn't it? It looks kind of awful. So I want more control. I do the dialog box right here, the settings on it, where I can control it however I want. So let's take a good look here. The number of segments comes to mind immediately, so you want it to have some detail. So bring up the number of segments, period, do that. There's a few other things. There's curves and tapering, twisting. I wouldn't recommend it right now. Um, there's tapering and taper amount. Let's start playing with that, and let's start to do the taper. No, yeah, that's from the middle. Don't really want that. There's other ones. Let's see, taper amount here. All right, let's start clicking to build that a bit. And yeah, I'm getting a huge taper on there. Very thick handle which is my fault on that, going down like so. So that looks pretty good. Um, if I like it, I can click it. Or if I don't, I don't have to. I'm going to... Mm, I really kind of want to kill it. I'm going to kill it. All right, I'm going to go with my instinct here. I'm going to get out of there, go to the top of the stack, jump over, grab this line, and I'm going to scale it out a bit. And I'm going to stretch it up this way that too. Okay, because it's such a huge handle. Let's try it again. I'll go back to the cut. I already have this polygon selected in polygon. And let's do it one more time. That's extrude long spline. There it is. It keeps my settings. That's fine. 21 curves. I want to make sure the lines do not overlap. And they don't. Just barely. I can adjust those manually if I want to. Mm. No. That looks pretty good. It's not overlapping there. And the whole model looks pretty nice there. So I think I'll go with something like that. You can adjust different things, of course. This is fun to play with, too. But... Mm, that's tempting. It might even look good. I think it's stretched out too far now, but okay. Enough playing this is just a tutorial. So, that's fine. 
I have it and I'm pretty much all set. When I have this, it looks pretty good. And I just fine tune it. And fine tuning is pretty easy. Take off this, take a look here. It looks pretty rough, doesn't it? So if I render it right now. <laughs> okay, I've got the other window. There's a few ways to set that up. I can actually do the set up and render, just render it this way. And there we go. And it looks all right, but I got a sharp spot here. A few ways to fix that. Now, the thing I'll think of first is, oh, this is mesh with it, which is true. But I'll grab the polygons first, the whole thing. Or I'll grab the elements, let's grab all the polygons. And this is smoothing groups down here. I'll just zoom in on this for a bit so you can see it. There's a smoothing groups. And I want to set the smoothing for all of it. Because that when I was working on that, it showed up it extruded sharp. So I don't want that. I will go to the smoothing groups and just auto smooth, boom, and it should smooth that out at the right angles, 45 degrees, fine, I can increase that if I need to, but it did it pretty well, uh, maybe I want to do that again, did I have more black face on, I don't know, perhaps I did, you don't want to make that mistake, I feel like I did it, yeah, I ignored the back face, never did that, unless you need to, okay, so let's try it again, on the back face, make sure you got everything, and let's do the smoothing. So auto smooth, boom, and that should be better now. See, it always pays to double check. There we go, much better. So when I render this now, it should be a lot smoother. Let's hit it and see what we get. F9, be a lot smoother now. Good. So that moves much better. But let's take it a few steps farther. Now is the time to do the mesh smooth. After you've got everything set up, we can do the mesh smooth now. So we'll hit it with it. Boom, there we go. When I render this, it should start looking pretty nice. All right, that looks pretty good. The rest will be covered with textures and so forth. If you really want it smooth out a little bit more, we can do that. But keep in mind, every time you add an iteration, you're multiplying the polygons by four effectively. So this will be nice and smooth. But I've increased the iterations. For still shots and so forth, no worries, it shouldn't be bad at all. But you start getting fancy with things, the polygons can add up, so be careful. This is a cool looking teacup, so I'm happy with it. And we'll keep it there. And yeah, that'll stop this part of the tutorial. I've got a very, actually like the handle, a very cool handle. Enjoy your tea.